on this computer. Good day, everyone. I'm super excited to be with you today sharing this uh, topic on consumer analytics. I think it's a relevant time considering that the whole world has been shaken upside down, basically, as a result of COVID-19. And when we were discussing with BBGR in terms of various topics that would be relevant for optometric practices during this time of change that's going to take place in our practices, we felt that a good place for us to start would be consumer analytics. So I'm excited. Uh, this is an interactive platform and we'll be giving practical examples throughout the, the, the webinar session. Just while, before I start, I just want to put a disclaimer. This is a collaborative webinar between BBGR and Vision Straight. All the content shared and discussed in this webinar may involve BBGR content. There are no financial kickbacks for Vision Straight in being here. BBGR has simply and kindly made this webinar series available for Vision Straight to run its uh, staff training course. And I'm very excited for this collaboration that we are on. The content of the slide deck is accurate up until the production of uh, this webinar. So if anything changes pertaining to the content, we will make that readily available for you at that given point in time. Just to give you a quick history, I love training. I love being in front of people. I love sharing my input on various optometric uh, revenue streams that people can take advantage of. And so the image that you're seeing now is just all the different events that we have been privileged enough to be part of. So as much as I would have loved to have this webinar in person, unfortunately, we are all under lockdown. And the webinar platform is the best place for us to be able to do so. All right, as a starting base, I felt it very necessary for us to talk about a journey of a patient in an optometry practice. And this has to do with the role that both the optometric staff and the optometrists play. And so this, this image that you are looking at now has got eight different images, starting from the top left until the bottom right-hand corner. And I'll go through exactly what this image represents. And we refer to it as either a journey of a patient in an optometry practice or the sales journey process that a patient goes through from the time they come to your practice the first time to the time that they leave. And I'll give you a very practical example of each and every single image and what it represents. Firstly, with the image at the top left of the, of the gentleman uh, speaking with the optometrist, this phase is either happening inside the test room or with the consultant and the patient. And this is, this is the phase that we refer to it as providing information. In this space, it is the process that is involved in the eye examination that needs to be detailed to the patient. You have to tell them why we examine their eyes. Elaborate further on the processes and procedures that might be involved. Go into detail about the different outcomes that might be expected. And most importantly, you need to, at this stage already, share with them what the potential way forward will be post to the results. So this, is, this can happen when, once the person has completed the, 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 the patient information forms and they're about to go in with the optometrist or the, the optometrist is busy with someone else in the test room and you are now having that discussion with them to say, this is what you should be expecting whilst you go in in the test room. So it's either you are doing it or the optometrist themselves will be the one that is doing it as a staff member. Just always remember that this is the first phase. The second phase with the child behind the slit lamp this is the examination phase. This is where we are discovering as much as possible about the visual concerns of that particular individual. We need to perform various tests where we will, that will enable us to reach a diagnosis and make it clear that the consumer understands every single procedure that is being done to them. You might not have the latest equipment in your practices, for example, but the advantage of explaining and examining things goes goes a long way in the patient being comfortable that I came to the right place and my visual concerns will be addressed. And so we investigate as well the lifestyle 
the, the leisure activities of the patient. We look into different solutions that are available to them. So already, if someone tells you that they are a lawyer, if someone tells the optometrist that they are an architect, what their working environment is like, when they're not at work, this is their leisure activities. All of that is taking place whilst the examination processes are being done. This is very, very important that when you see that, wait a minute, this person hates glasses, but they don't have an option but to wear glasses. You need to already be thinking that, how are we going to make the eyewear experience of that particular individual worthwhile? What is it pertaining to the examination procedures that we need to highlight to the patient for them already at that stage when we're examining their eyes, that they are fully aware that we got, you, you might need more than one pair of glass because your visual problems are as follows. Your leisure activities are as follows. So you already have an opportunity to introduce management solutions whilst you are still examining the patient. And so I encourage the optometrists that are logged on now to this webinar, as well as the staff, go through the process with your team in terms of when you are in the test room, what is it that you are doing when you're examining the patient? So that your team is fully aware uh, and comfortable in telling patients what processes uh, and procedures are done. Uh, we, we, you then have to discuss with the consumer the different management options that will be available. The third image here, with the, the lady just sitting back and explaining to the patient who's in the examination chair, we, it's the education phase. And here, we thoroughly explain ourselves to the consumer. We make sure that the consumer clearly understands what just happened, why you did what you did. Uh, we inspire trust and we build confidence uh, in them. You know, this is a two-way uh, relationship that you want to establish. And so you, you sort of like showcase your expertise that I did this because it has resulted in the following information that we now know about your eyes and how we're going to manage it will be as follows. So you're building trust. The fourth image with the question mark, this is where we are asking questions now. We establish a two-way relationship as I, as, as I stated. We break through any, any communication barriers that might exist. So I encourage the optometrists that are listening now, as well as the staff, if you are having a patient who speaks a different language from you, and you are going to be explaining things, whether you're explaining examination procedures, whether you're explaining uh, pricing, do yourself a huge favor and make sure that you are in a position to break through any or spot or identify any communication barriers that put, might potentially exist. And if you are in an environment where, or in a location where you're seeing a lot of patients that are different from you, I encourage you to sort of like on the day-to-day -day stuff that you do, try and get that, those, th those sentences uh, recorded uh, in a different language. I know there are different apps that you can actually uh, get that can help you with translations of various words, uh, in getting them translated in a different language. This is going to help you. Remember the previous stage here with the, with the lady here explaining uh, uh, exactly what has just happened? That's where you're going to see when you're speaking to a person that this person understands or they don't understand. So when you are asking them questions, if there's someone in the practice that can be able to translate information that you are needing the patient to understand, utilize that individual, whether you're talking about examination procedures or pricing. So I'll just keep on giving you examples of how you can do that. Uh, part of asking the questions, you have to address all concerns that might be raised you need to provide reassurances and again, build confidence that every concern that the patient might have, we are going to have the necessary solution for that. The fifth image here, this is where now, for example, where you see the boy getting fitted with contact lenses, we are convincing the consumer now on what the problem or problems are, what causes them, what do we do about them? What are the features and, 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 and features and benefits and values of the possible management solutions that are available uh, from the lenses, the frames, and so forth. What value for money will be provided? So you are having an opportunity here to let the patient experience the product. So if you're in the test, if the patient, for example, is in the test room with the optometrist and there are other patients waiting, when you select glasses, a, a, a quick tip, don't wait for 
the examination procedures to end. I would rather say, okay, we have done testing. This person is going to get two pairs of glasses, for example. I would step out of the test room. I would go into the frame room, or the, whether you've got all your frames displayed, select the necessary frames, then go back into the test room and discuss the eyewear with them while they have their frame on. So don't finish everything, and then you're going to go back at the end to go and do frame selection. Find a way with certain patients where you can include frame selection whilst you're still in the test room. So go out and come back in. So that when you're discussing options on the, on the, on the lens way, for example, and you're saying this frame will have this particular BBGR lens on it. This is the, 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 the value that you should get from this product. This is the features. This is how you're going to use this frame. This is when you're going to be using this pair of spectacles. And the second option here, we're going to put this coating on it. We're going to include these features, uh, I mean, materials on the second pair of frames. So once you've already covered that with the patient as the optometrist in the text room, you indicate what you have discussed with them on the test card so that when you finish and you give back the form to the, to the, to the staff member and you, they're going to be the ones who are discussing pricing and medical aid benefits, at least you have already finished that process with the patient so that whatever that they're going to be saying they will be reiterating that which you already discussed with the patient. So always remember that. Don't finish everything in the test room and then go out. Break your examination time apart by going, selecting frames, coming back in. The question that you perhaps might have right now is, Obi, some patients will take too long with selecting of frames. 100%. I totally agree with you. And hence, I said, you won't be having this strategy with every single patient you're going to be picking up already from your your the, your patient card that this person has been here for the last three or four years with us or is this a new patient is this someone that is always going with what we are recommending versus going with what they prefer so you have to know your patients very well and i'll give you an example of that later so if you, you have to make sure that you're not going to go out of the test room and spend 30 minutes selecting frames with a patient that you've seen for the first time. So there are opportunities where you can spot which individuals would be best suited for you to have this approach with. And I'll show you in, a, in the next few slides exactly what type of patient that will be. The next one here, where we say, with the lady here explaining to the granny uh, about what, what's going on there, it's where we persuade them now on what action to take, what decisions to make. Uh, we're getting their buying in. Are they agreeing? with what you have discussed with them up until that point in time. You are giving them, you are giving them guarantees about the product that they are getting. And uh, the next phase here, which is where the, the young girl now is putting contact lenses for herself, that phase, we refer to it now when you are delivering on the overall experience. So this is what we mean here, is you under promise and over deliver. If you are practice, never get into a position where you are promising things that you cannot deliver on as a, as a practice. Always under promise and over deliver. No manipulations. Whatever that you say you're going to do, do exactly that. If you see that you will not be able to deliver on the time frames that, you, that which you have indicated to the patient, don't wait for the patient to get in touch with the practice. You get in touch with the, with the patient first and say, sir or ma'am, uh, we, we're expecting your glasses to be here in the practice by tomorrow close of business. However, we have just gotten in touch with the lab and this is what they have informed us that there will be a date delay. We're sorry for the inconvenience. You know, a, pre, a patient will appreciate communication coming from the practice before they are in a position of frustration whereby it results in them communicating with the, with the, with the practice. So always remember that. Um, so it's very, very important that you have clear after service protocols. So even after the, you have, you have, the person has collected their glasses, and it was a first time wearer of spectacles. And that particular individual did not want to wear glasses. If I'm a practice owner, I will phone that patient two weeks later, for example, if it was a first time wearer of those particular pair of glasses and say, sir, ma'am, this is Obi from the practice. Uh, how, is, how have you been? How has your experience with the eyewear that you got? How has your visual experience changed? Touch base with those patients of yours that are getting their products for the very first time. 
especially patients that have always been wearing glasses, but they were not wearing their glasses from your practice. They've got 10 years of being at another practice and now they came to your practice for the first time. Pick up the phone, post them being at your practice and get in touch with them to find out if they are satisfied with the overall experience, if they are happy with how they are now seeing with their new pair of glasses. If they got two pairs of glasses, have they had an opportunity to utilize both? Uh, what, any concerns, anything that they've picked up that is different? Get in touch with the patient because guess what? For the past 10 years where they were getting their glasses, that particular practice was not doing that. So you going the extra mile, ensuring them you care for the overall service post them purchasing a pair of spectacles from you. That is very, very important. And the last image here is following up. And I've literally just touched base on, you need to, as following up, especially with your existing patients who have been with you for a very long time. Think about it now. We are in a, a, a different economic environment right now. Everyone has been affected one way or another by COVID-19. And so one of the things that you have to then think of as a practice is how do we retain the patients that have always been coming here over the years? How do we continue providing a service to them that is exceeding their expectations? One of the things that we can do in that is get feedback from your consumers, get feedback from those people, follow up with them to say, you've been with us for the last six years. Why have you been coming here? Uh, what is it that you feel that we can do differently? So when you're following up now going forward, get as much detail as you possibly can from every single patient over the next few months, because that's going to tell you information pertaining to your practice and your brand as to why people keep coming back to your practice. And have a staff member that is keeping track of all the following up that the practice is doing. So you can rotate it amongst the staff. So one week, Ntabi Seng does the, or this month, Ntabi Seng is the one who's doing the following up or the dispenser in the practice, or it's done by the optometrist. If you had a challenging patient, let it be done by the optometrist doing the following up. So have a routine and have a schedule and have a, a, a place where you are completing and filling in the information that you are getting as feedback from the patients. And once a month, discuss it with the team that guys, we're picking up that people are appreciating us phoning them. Um, they don't like the SMSs that we are sending them. Perhaps let us change from using an SMS system to using a WhatsApp system and sending information via WhatsApp and utilizing an image and you put in the information that you want the patient to know on a WhatsApp image and you're sending that to them. Perhaps that is something that you guys might, might, might be interested in, in doing. So when you get information uh, feedback from the patient, it helps you plan better for that particular patient. All right. This next slide here, we have referred to it as the South African challenge. I'll quickly go through it. The challenge or opportunity, depending on how you want to see it. Right now, we, South Africa is one of the most unequal societies that you will find. From a racial point of view, we are faced with very, various challenges as a country. A quick tip for optometric practices, learn an African language uh, as urgently as you possibly can. If you're in an area that speaks Zulu, and the, or the majority of your patients that come into your practice are Zulu-speaking people, as a staff, learn Zulu. I'm not saying you must be fl uh, fluent, uh, but be able to communicate the common, basic, everyday stuff that the practice deals with. So how you greet a person, uh, when they greet you back in Zulu, what do you then say? If all that you know is the greeting part, then know it and be efficient with it. The patient might say to you, uh, continue in Zulu. the patient might continue in Zulu, for example, but your, your, your knowledge of Zulu is limited to a certain point. Tell them, Dr. Chabalala, um, or Babam Kize, for example, uh, I'm still learning my Zulu, so uh, how do I say this in Zulu? You're breaking that ice, you're breaking, it's sort of like an icebreaker that might exist between yourself and the patient. And say, same applies with, uh, you as a staff member and your name is in Tabiseng, and I mean, Yer Breitenbach walks into the, uh, to the practice, be able to greet them in Afrikaans. Don't have this attitude that a lot of people in our country have that I'm Zulu, uh, why should I speak Afrikaans? And 
uh, why can't the Afrikaans person speak Zulu? Don't have that attitude. You remember our role as optometric practices is to create an environment for every single patient that walks into our practices. Number one, to feel welcomed, to feel like they belong here, to feel respected, to feel like, wow, that's different. Wherever I go, I don't get this type of approach from people. So make a person feel welcomed. And if it's speaking to them in their language, that's going to be a, 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 a deal maker uh, and not a deal breaker. The second one, price and affordability. Everyone is feeling the punch right now as a result of the, the, the COVID-19 pandemic. And so people, when they come to your practice right now, they're going to want to get the best possible deal. And they're going to try and negotiate with you uh, on the price. One of the things that you need to be aware of, and I encourage you to think about this very carefully, is the following. People are always going to be looking at one of two things. What will they be gaining if they go with what you recommend versus what will they be losing if they don't? Our responsibility as optometric practices is to provide them with the, and show them and showcase the value of what they will be getting when they do go with what, we, what we're recommending for them. The next one, service delivery. This one is a big one. Everything in the practice should be about excellence. Nothing else, nothing less, nothing more. Great service delivery in a practice is what leads to increased sales in that particular practice. And so if service delivery is at, a, is at an optimum, sales will be at a maximum. The one, found, the one forms the foundational basis of the other one. So you can have the most beautiful practice, great team, um, great products, affordable products, but if the service delivery is not at the level at which it's supposed to be, all of those things mean absolutely nothing. The next one, media or perceptions, uh, or brand perceptions, if I can put it that way. Always remember this thing about patients that, or consumers as a whole, is that consumers are always looking for companies that are going to help them survive and thrive. So when you start thinking about your practice, the products that you are selling, the service delivery that you are giving, how is the practice positioned to help people survive, to help people thrive? What we are doing is we are providing visual solutions, right? In the, in the, in, in the, in, in the terms of IK and I, I, I way. So when we're communicating with patients about the eyewear, about the spectacles, we need to be communicating how the spectacles are going to help them survive and thrive in their working environment, at home, in their leisure activities and so forth. So communicate the functionality and the usage of the products that we are selling to the patients in terms of the value that they're going to get. And this is how it's going to impact them in their day-to-day -day activities. So that's how we communicate with patients. We don't just communicate buy one, get one free. We don't just communicate, if you get this, you will get that. That's not what we're supposed to be doing. What we're supposed to be doing is positioning our brands as uh, positioning our companies as brands that help, that help patients survive and thrive, especially now. A person needs to be aware that when they don't go for this product that you are recommending, this will be the consequences that they will have in their visual environment. Uh, so it's very, very important that you understand that. And the last one here, bias. Don't have a bias uh, uh, on anything. Uh, avoid having a bias on uh, people based on their religious uh, uh, preferences, gender preferences, ethnic preferences, whether it's a person that looks like they're very fancy and wealthy versus the madala that comes into the practice wearing overalls. Right now, people are going to appreciate a place that's going to make them feel welcomed. So if you're in a practice, make sure that you're not having any form of bias towards anyone. Just remember that it's very, very important. Let's move on. The next section here, we refer to as a driving force behind the consumer. And I'll just give you practical examples on this. The first one here is on expectation. The quickest and easiest way to win someone over is to exceed the expectations. When you do so, 
you are, cre you are creating an opportunity for that particular individual to talk about your practice wherever they are because you exceeded the expectation. Right now, if you look at globally, all the different companies during this pandemic that we have all been uh, part of, certain companies are standing out as a result of the decisions that they are making pertaining to how they do business with consumers during difficult times. And those companies will stand out. So right now, remember, your practice is in a shopping mall, for example. Five other practices are in there. When a person walks into that shopping center, what's, don't, think your, don't think of your brand or your practice in terms of the optometric practice alone. Think of your practice in terms of out of the 200 sh uh, shops in this mall, what makes, our what makes our business stand out? And the only way that you can do that is by exceeding expectations. So as a practice, go back and ask yourselves various questions pertaining to, guys, what can we do to exceed expectations? The only way you can do that is to know what expectations consumers have that come to a shopping mall, that come to a optometry practice. And when you know what those expectations are, you are then in a position to exceed or know what is it that you can do to exceed those expectations. The next one, experience. A worthwhile experience leads to a worthy expenditure. If a person does not feel welcomed, they won't spend their money in that environment. If they don't feel like you guys are prioritizing them, they won't spend their money in that particular practice. Environment, uh, very, very important that you need to remember about the environment. The attitude of the team determines the altitude of the business. And the atmosphere of the, or the, the attitude of the team determines the atmosphere of the practice. And the atmosphere of the practice will determine the altitude of the business. And so it's very, very important that every single person in the team is fully aware of the following, or they have, or they encompass the following characteristics within each one of them. Number one, a positive attitude. Number two, uh, excellence should be modeled by everyone. Number three, uh, competence. If you're not competent, it's going to be a problem. You cannot be excellent. And if you're not excellent, uh, you're compromising the service delivery of the practice. If you're compromising the service delivery of the practice, you are then compromising the sales of the practice. You see how it all ties in? All right. The fourth one, relationship building. Uh, personalize the experience that every consumer has. I don't know what you guys think, but I'm a firm believer that when a person comes to the practice today to have their eyes examined, and I can see that, okay, this is Mr. So-and-so, and we do everything, they get their glasses. When they come and collect their glasses, and I call them out by their name, and I say, Mr. Mukoni, how are you, sir? When they see that you're remembering them, there's just something that makes them light up. That's what I mean about relationship building. You need to learn consumer names as much as you possibly can. Moments of, if you, if you interacted with 10 patients in a day, and out of those 10 patients, four, you really connected with. If I, when I was in practice, for example, I used to have a, no, a notebook that I would carry around with me. And I would write down various experiences that I had with a particular patient. And I would always go back at the end of that business day to look at, oh, I saw 10 people. I interacted with four, uh, like I connected with four out of those 10. And this is what stood out the most about them. Get in the habit of that. It becomes common practice and you'll become much comfortable learning consumer names as you go forth. So that's part of the relationship building. And the last one is problem solving as part of the environment. We are here to solve problems. And so... Always remember, clients don't come, cl clients are not right, but they come first. So whenever you're communicating with a person, especially a patient that is frustrated, they ordered glasses, their glasses are delayed for whatever reason, and now they are angry. Be quick to showcase to the patient that you are going to solve this problem. You're not going to abdicate the responsibility to someone else. So if a patient is talking to you, don't ever say you don't know. Rather say, ma'am, sir, I, I, I know you are very frustrated because we have let you down as a practice. Ma'am, can I quickly take down your contact details so that I can phone you back and get to the bottom of this? Ma'am, I promise I'll call you in the next 10 minutes. Uh, 
can you kindly just give me 10 minutes just to sort this thing out? When you drop that phone, guess what's going to happen? A patient is going to walk in and you have now promised someone something that you're going to do in the next 10 minutes. That person that has just walked in, communicate with them. Sir, ma'am, I've just uh, gotten off the phone with a particular individual, with a patient, and I promise to call them back in 10 minutes. It's something very, very urgent, sir. Can you just give me a moment while you are waiting for me, sir? Can you kindly please look at our products that are on the shelves right now? If as this is going to be the case, for example, when there's no one else available in the practice to assist the person that's coming in. Communicate, guys. That's the thing about consumers. We don't Consumers don't get frustrated with how busy you are. They get frustrated with lack of communication, lack of uh, delivering on what you promised. So make sure that you're making the person aware that you are solving something whilst at the same time, you're getting to the bottom of that which was important. If there's two of you in the practice and the optometrist is testing, don't then say you get back to the person in 10 minutes. Put a time frame to it that will work based on the working environment that you are in so that you can deliver on that which you said to the patient. Excellence, I can't reiterate this any further. Uh, this should be the most important thing in the practice. Uh, and the last one, education. Constantly look for opportunities within your current systems for how you can do what you do better. Here's an example. Uh, you see various, you, let's say your practice sees 10 different medical aids, but on a day-to-day -day basis, there's those top three or top five medical aids that you see every single day with the various patients that walk into the practice. Make sure that as a staff member, you are fully aware that on these top five medical aids that we are seeing regularly in the practice, this is the price for the eye examination that each of these medical aids pay for. These are the different options available on the medical aid so that when a patient comes in and they say, hi, how much does it cost to have my eyes examined? You're not gonna just say, is it cash or medical aid? If the patient says medical aid, I don't understand why most staff members say uh, it depends on your medical aid. No, take the conversation further. Say, sir, ma'am, what medical aid are you on? The person will tell you, I'm on this medical aid. Oh, with that medical aid, what option are you on? Oh, they will tell you the option. Or they will say, I don't know. Well, this is how it works. The, this medical aid pays the following for uh, the eye examination, and they usually, they usually cover the following for your spectacle lenses and frames. However, uh, we will have to confirm with the benefits post the examination. So would you like us to uh, schedule your examination today? We've got a slot available at this time or that time. So continue the process. Don't just say cash or medical aid. That person that is asking, how much does it cost to have my eyes tested, for example, they are going to three or four other practices doing the same thing. The practice that's going to say that, 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 that what is it about your practice that you're working in? that will make that person commit to that practice to have their eye examination there. And so this is the driving force behind the consumer. Um, go through it with your team and ask yourselves, what, what is it that our practice can do in these five different components that we have just highlighted here? All right, next section, we'll then go into more detail pertaining to consumer profiling. And as we are going through this consumer profiling section, I'm gonna use various BBGR examples as I indicated to you. And I'm just going to get some of the reps to then assist me with this section here so that you guys understand how do you communicate BBGR products that you guys are selling in your practices to the patients? How do you spot an opportunity for you to introduce a product, for example, that, that would be an upgrade towards the previous one that you are using? So, just the thing about the consumer that you really need to remember, beyond quality products and great service delivery, consumers today want something far more than that. They want a worthwhile experience that is centered on the following components. Number one, value, usage and functionality, convenience, customization, and always remember consumers that walk into the practice can also be divided into the following categories. And I'll give examples of this later. Generation types, market segment, and purchasing decisions. So in the next few slides, I'll give you examples of this. All right, here's some 
something that I want you guys to, to think about. What strategies that do you guys have for families, for business owners, for the corporate working class, for the majority of South Africans who are using public transportations, for the individuals who are into sports, who are into fashion, who are into trends, how, what strategies do you have? And most importantly, people that are just at home as a result of all these restrictions. And even now, if you, if you listened to various reports that are going around pertaining to the, how the future looks like over the next two to three years, whilst we are still battling with overcoming this terrible pandemic, is that there's going to be a lot of people who are working from home. So people are not going to be going to the malls for no good reason. They're going to be going there because they want something specific at a particular place. And so people that are going to be spending more time on their phones and they're going to be at home, what strategies would you then have or do you have for those particular individuals? So for example, uh, a family comes into the practice, but only the, 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 the husband is, or the father is the one who's getting their eyes examined. You as a practice need to have sales scripts readily available to how you introduce the conversation about, hey, during the lockdown, uh, how much time were your kids spending in front of the, the, the computer? Now that the education, system, uh, education approach is changing, a lot of schools were introducing e-learning to their students. How has that been for your kids? Have you picked up how your kid is in front of a tablet, for example, versus the two to three hours that they used to spend before COVID-19? Now they're spending, or they were spending six to seven hours in front of a tablet. Do you noticing, are you noticing them pulling their, their, their tablets towards their face, or are they going closer towards the tablet? Uh, when they're sitting in front of the computer, what's, do they prefer looking at the computer screen uh, in a darker room or in a lighter room? What are some of the things? So you see, what, what you're doing is you're introducing various topics pertaining to the, the, the visual environment of all the other family members. So as a, as, a, as a practice, you need to have that readily prepared. Business owners, for example, they prefer to be treated in a particular way how is it that your practice is going to be approaching these various individuals uh, during this time when we're now going to open and go back into our practices? What are you going to be doing differently? And what strategies should you be thinking about pertaining to the different examples that are on your screen right now? So just go back with your teams and look at these different examples. All right, this is what the, 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 the examples I referred to earlier on where I said, we're going to be introducing BBGR products. However, this is what you're looking at right now is a classification and category placement. What we mean by this is here comes Martin or Marvin or, or, or Mark who has been with the practice for the last 10 years. What I've noticed happening in a lot of practices, unfortunately, is that for practices that are pulling up the file of the individual out of the filing cabinet, they pull up the file. And what tends to happen is all the test cards will be in that one particular file. There isn't somehow a snapshot of Mark's behavior over the last 10 years. And what we mean by that is that you need to have, especially this is very, very important for the staff. You need to have what we call a snapshot of Mark's 10 year behavior. So this will be like a sheet. This is just an example. This will be in a, a sheet where FTV stands for first time visitor. Follow up visitor will be the FUV, spectacle wearer, material features. So with the first time visitor, you will indicate the date and the year of today is the 20, uh, 24th or 22nd. Whatever date it will be, you will indicate that particular date. Then follow up visitor, you will then indicate, is it the second, the third, or the fourth eye exam that they're doing? Indicate if it's, they've been wearing glasses, but they have not necessarily been coming to your practice over the last 10 years. So you will indicate, this is the fourth pair of, fourth time that they're having their eyes examined, and this was the first time that they're coming to have their eyes examined by us. Uh, then you indicate spectacle wearer, 
if they know, you can see what spectacles they're wearing, write it down. Single vision, multifocal. What coatings do they have on under material features? Do they wear contact lenses? So if it was Mark who has been coming to the same practice, you will then indicate the t how many times Mark has been here and the last time. Spectacle wearer, you will indicate what type of spectacles. You'll indicate even the amount that Mark uh, uh, spent. And here's a perfect example here. May 2018, two pairs of spectacles and he spent X amount of money on his spectacles and he was happy. Mark had purchased a single vision uh, or SV 1.6 from the essential range offered by BBGR on the material features he had a Neva Plus. So this gives you any contact lenses? No. Uh, any and uh, under what you can ask um, if if this person has been wearing the same type of lens for the last few years, you will indicate has been on the same lens over the last. So you need some somehow a, a snapshot of of Mark over the last ten years, which will be like a summary. Wh why is this important? This will be important in the sense that you will get to see that, wait a minute, Mark spends X amount of hours in front of the computer. And so uh, any of the BBGR reps, can you guys come on board now? Let's say, uh, where am I talking to now? It's Jelenia. Jelenia. Uh, let's say Mark was wearing uh, SV 1.6 from the essential range. And Mark has been on this product for the last four years or five years. But the visual demands of Mark require him to be wearing something else. What would you recommend would be the product that would be best suited for Mark? If, let's say, for example, he's spending 14 hours in front of a computer and the, he, he, he's been wearing Neva Plus, but he's not been 100% happy with it. What would you recommend would be a potential upgrade from the current one? Well, um, if he's been spending so much time on a computer, I would definitely suggest a second pair that would be uh, mid-distance or um, <clears throat> your yeah, office, office lens. And I would upgrade his Neva Plus to a Crizal Preventure because that will cut out the blue wavelengths, the harmful blue wavelengths um, to a certain uh, necessary degree. Um, in order for him to protect his eyes against any pathology. So, um, yeah, I would upgrade, upgrade him in that way. And also, potentially, if he does not want an office lens, I would suggest to put him on a premium range multifocal. Oh. Okay, that's very good. You see, you, you, this is what the snapshot, thank you very much, Julie. This is what the snapshot is going to be giving you. It's going to be giving you, and you might be thinking, I'm an I'm a eyewear consultant. I don't know all these technical stuff. But when a person comes in as a practice, especially even if you're the, the, the staff member, you will pick up that, wait a minute, Mark has been coming here for the, for the same product over years. Why haven't we ever spoken to him about alternative products which might create or give him a better visual experience with the particular product? So if you don't have a snapshot of what the, the, the purchasing behavior or the, the buying behavior of, this, of the eyewear experience from Mark, for example, over the last few years, when you see him now in 2020, you're gonna be treating him as if, as if it's a new patient because you don't have that range of, wait a minute, every time Mark comes here, he's spending 4,000 rands on a pair of spectacles. Uh, so me coming in after the eye exam, me talking to Mark about him now spending 10,000 rands, we're going to have a, a, a challenge with him because he's going to feel like, wait a minute, I've been coming here for 10 years and none of this has ever been done before. So you, as the snapshot gives you a framework with which you are able to work with uh, based on the type of product this person has always been using versus the type of product that they need. You're going to be looking at the spending behavior. You're going to be looking at the frames that this person is always going for branded frames and he's always paying the upgrade on the second pair. But on the second pair, he's not always having the right lens on the second pair. So there's a disconnection between frames and lenses. So in us communicating with him, it will be very, very important that we are making sure that Mark understands that the quality of vision should never be compromised 
based on the buy one, get one free promotions that we're all running in our practices. Mark needs to understand that the quality of vision that you're going to be getting in product one or the first pair of spectacles will provide you with the following. And on the second pair, it will provide you with the following. So that's what we're communicating, not just buy one, get one free. So do this as a, as a practice, especially the, the best place for you to start with would be with your everyday patients. And there are actually, uh, uh, there are pens that you can actually buy from stationary companies where you write as a, in, you write the, on, on the sheet as a, with, with ink, but you are able to erase the ink. That will be very, very beneficial for you to have such pens because then you are able to use the same form and keep updating the same form as opposed to having 10 of these forms. You've got the same forms. Um, on the same form, for example, you can indicate the, what does Mark do for a living? If it changes, you indicate that it changed now. If, for example, Mark has referred anyone to you, to your practice over the years, or if he refers to some, refers other people to the practice you indicate the referral so don't be treating every single patient without realizing that wait a minute i just by looking at a snapshot of this person for the last 10 years or even if it's a first time visitor you're building that now with the with the, with, with that from start on that particular day so i, I urge everyone to utilize this category placement and uh, cl cl classification uh, sheet for your patients. And if you want this to be sent to you guys, you can easily just drop us a mail and we can kindly send this to you. But better yet, we go into more detail about this in our book. So both our first book and our second book, we have this image in the, in the book and we go into much detail pertaining to it in the book. So please get in touch with us. All right, consumer profiling. Remember earlier on when we were talking about driving force behind the consumer? Well, this is when, when I mentioned the expectations that you need to know that patients have or consumers have so that you can exceed them. The next chart here gives you a breakdown. So this is also in the book. I just wanted to include it here so that you can know what are the defining characteristics of a consumer. When you, you think of a patient, that's, the first, that's, that's that person that you see for the very first time that walks into your, into your practice. Uh, they've never had any examination on their eyes done. So this is the very first time. That will be the patient. Uh, the customer will be that person that has worn glasses before. They could be a person that has come to your practice before, or there could be someone that has been wearing glasses, but they come into your practice for the first time. And then the client, this will be someone that has been with you year after year, getting all the visual requirements from you. So also in the book, uh, under diagnosis, for example, for a patient, we then give you various examples of what the patient will ask as a question. Under the customer record keeping, we give you examples of that. So get the book. Uh, this will be very helpful because the information that you'll get inside the book pertaining to this will help you understand what expectations patients have or customers have or consumers have as a whole when they walk into an optometric practice. And if you know what expectations they have, you'd be in a better position to exceed those expectations. All right, quickly, we're almost done. I just want to give you some practical examples on various generation types. Uh, just a side note, I don't look like the rock, but I'm, I'm hoping that uh, after the, <laughs> the, the, the next few months, this is how I will look like. So give me, by the time we are done with the nine uh, or the 10 uh, webinars that we are doing in collaboration with BBCR, I trust that I will look like The Rock. So please hold me accountable uh, and I would love to see how the journey goes. But what we mean by generation types is you've got various generation types. Um, the Clint Eastwood here and this couple taking a selfie, they are part of the silent generation. Uh, they are the generation that are strong, self-sufficient, and they prefer to work, to work behind the scenes if they still do. Uh, the, you have to use testimonials to effectively engage this group. Uh, offer them time, spend time with them. Don't rush the process. So if you know you're going to see your, a patient that is booked is a part of the silent generation, don't be booking a, a time slot of, that will be the same as the time slot of every other person. These people prefer you to spend time with them and don't rush the processes that you are in, that you are doing 
during the eye examination. And even when you're communicating pricing, quotations, whatever that you're communicating with them, don't rush the process. They need to be given the time to understand that which you are saying to them. Uh, and so provide detailed directions on how to use uh, that which you are prescribing for them. So always remember that. The baby boomers, this is where Michelle Obama uh, comes in. They're the first generation to grow up with the TV, audio cassettes, uh, fast food and credit cards. Uh, they, today, these group of people, they hold powerful positions in the, almost all, society, all industries. And so to effectively engage this group, you need to provide them with knowledge as they want to understand the big picture, uh, offer them a new experience as they like uh, adventure, discuss technology with them, uh, consider communicating with them via social media because a lot of them have actually become accustomed to social media. To the BBGR reps, this is obviously those um, patients who are already uh, on they, they are presbyopic patients, basically, all the baby boomers, they're already presbyopic patients. What if, I'm just gonna think about it this way, if, uh, if a person has been wearing, a, or let me, let me actually put this question to you guys here, uh, as, the, as the reps, for you guys to answer this. What are the common BBGR products that are very good for multifocal wearers? Anyone? Um, hi, Obi, it's Sherry. Hi, Sherry. Um, depending on budget, one of our top selling uh, multifocals is actually the Cyrus Plus. And um, the reason why it's such a good seller is because um, it gives the patients a wider intermediate and near, but at a slightly reduced cost than, for example, going to a customized lens or um, spending a bit more on a more high-line lens. Um, it's been developed specifically because there is such a massive need. I mean, everybody's on a laptop, a tablet, a mobile phone, a computer these days, especially now with this COVID time. And this lens just gives them a little bit more in the intermediate and near so that it's more comfortable for them to work in those environments. Wow, thank you. You see, guys, I love that explanation from Sherry because she did not tell us. Um, she, it was very simple. And that's the type of information that you should be comfortable discussing with a patient. You know, when you recommend a patient, there's certain common features and, and benefits on every single product that when you say, oh, you see, you're wearing bifocals and... Um, What's, what kind of a working environment do you have? And the patient will tell you. And now you're going to see that, wait a minute, there's an opportunity for me to introduce multifocals uh, for that particular individual. When you start mentioning that we've got multifocals, you might not know, for example, the, what type of multifocal it is, but you need to know what the difference is between the type of multifocals as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an eyewear consultant, for example. It's very, very important. I might not know that, wait a minute, BBGR has this lens, that lens, or that lens. But what's important for me to know is the features and benefits of the different types of multifocals. Why is this important? When you're talking about pricing and, and quotations and stuff like that, you remember you could be in a practice that is very busy. Patient sees the optometrist, optometrist writes on the patient card what, might, what multifocal uh, this person is supposed to be getting. Now it's post COVID-19 lockdown. The medical aid only pays for a certain portion of the of the of the optical requirements, and now the patient now wants to downgrade to a single pair of vision spectacles. Your role, and now the optometrist has gone back into the into the test room with another patient. Your role now as a staff member would be to con to 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 reiterate and the, why the optometrist recommended that particular product. So you might not know. Uh, the difference in the, dif I mean, the, the names of the multifocal product and they differ in price, correct? And perhaps what the optometrist recommended was the most expensive multifocal product. So before a person walks out with single vision glasses, even though the optometrist recommended multifocals, you need to be in a position to say, wait a minute, sir, the reason why the optometrist recommended this is because the features and benefits of this would are as follows. And this is what you complained about. And it goes back to that snapshot uh, category placement 
card, that if you have that information on the card, you are in a better position to answer any questions that patients might have pertaining to why they don't want to go with a particular product, especially when the challenge is price related. So that's why you need to know how to approach uh, a Michelle Obama, for example, whereby she's a baby boomer and you need to communicate with her in a particular manner. So you don't want to find yourself discussing challenges pertaining to product eyewear with Michelle Obama, but you are using techniques that you should be applying to a millennial. So that's why this uh, information is very, very important. That when you, exactly how Sherry discussed it, when you introduce the features and benefits of a product to a particular individual, you need to be communicating with that individual based on the generation type and what would be best if, or most effective to communicate with that particular individual. Let's look at my future self, The Rock. <laughs> the, the Rock is Generation X. They grew up in an era of blockbuster movies, popular music on TV, Nintendo, video games, for example. They are moved by images and graphics rather than written words. And so this group, they want you to demonstrate that which you're talking about. So you need to share images and, 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 and graphics, for example, to get their buy-in, deliver what you promise on, uh, offer suggestions rather than telling them what to do, approach them as individuals. Uh, don't just put them in a one size fits all. So if it's a, if it's a Generation X person uh, who is now going to move from being um, a, a normal, a single vision eyewear, eyewearer to now becoming uh, a presbyopic patient, for example, and it's going to require multifocals. Uh, it's very, very important that you will show them that wait a, here's someone else that had the same problem with you. He was 39 years of age, 40 years of age, and they never had any problems with, with their vision. Up until recently, they came into our practice and they needed multifocals and this is how we this is the they had the similar problem with you and this is the multifocal that they that we gave them so you see you have to sort of like off it's a discussion with them you don't tell them what to do you you you, you have to build trust with them first in how you engage them and very very important with this group you need to steer away from anything that could threaten their lifestyle be it political social or, or business and Stay away from conversations that are, are touchy. Don't go, talk about, hey, um, don't talk about uh, politics. Don't talk about religion. Don't talk about anything with this particular group of individuals because you could, they could have hold a particular viewpoint and you could end up saying something contrary to what they believe and that can turn them off from your practice and anything else that you want to talk to them about. So just remember uh, uh, about this group that go straight to the point uh, rather than hinting at something. This is why you need this. This is how it's going to work. If it doesn't, if you don't go for it, this is a, what you're going to experience. Uh, this is why we're recommending this product versus this product. Yes, your concern is that this product is more expensive and you can't afford it. But understand, this is what you came complaining about, sir. And so we are not recommending this product based on price. We're recommending this product based on the fact that your visual needs are as follows. Your visual concerns are as follows. So we're recommending this to you so that this will be the best product that you will get. This is what you'll be gaining when you go with this product that we're recommending versus if you don't. That's how you approach this uh, Generation X. Lastly, I'll just focus on uh, generation oh, the millennials. This is where I come in. We make the largest group force in the, I mean, the largest group in the workforce today across all industries. Uh, we have an immense influence on trends and, and markets and consumer behavior. Uh, so to effectively engage us, you have to communicate with us through various social media platforms where necessary. Uh, uh, give us feedback on our ideas. You know, if I'm coming to come into a practice and I, I'm having to decide between three or four different pairs of glasses as a millennial, ask, am I on social media? I'm going to say to you, yes. That's a perfect opportunity to say, sir, because you're undecided with these four amazing products that you have selected. How about we take some images and we put it on Facebook or Instagram and we go live right now and we ask your, 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 your followers what, which of these four products would they prefer? And we, you do it, mark this one, one, two, three, or four. Uh, this is what we're recommending. 
this is what you're going to do. You're getting them to, do you remember the millennials are part of communities. And so they will always want to be involved or feel valued. So when they provide that to their own followers, it gives them that, wow, uh, that was nice. That I, they, they want to be recognized. You know? So recognition is very, very important to millennials, for example. So when you get to do that experience with them, with their followers, and followers are going to say, we want option two and four, for example, or one and, one and three, for example. And let's say both those products had nothing to do with buy one, get one free, but were both products from two branded frames. Those are the two frames that people liked. Why are you then going to introduce a generic pair of frames, but the options that you put for people to select were two options uh, or four options from branded frames. So when you now introduce the buy one, get one free. So sir, your audience liked both these pair of glasses. We've currently have a buy one, get one free. However, the buy one, the, the second, the free one comes from a generic range of products. So, but this is what your followers or your audience preferred. The upgrade from this frame to that frame will be as follows. And like for, they were only giving you in terms of look and feel, but this is the features and benefits of the first pair of spectacles. And this is the features and benefits of the second pair of, uh, of, uh, of, of spectacles. What you complained about to the optometrist were as follows, uh, or the optometrist has written on your test card that they're recommending this features and, uh, on, on your lenses or these material features on your lenses. So what we would advise you, sir, is understand that this product, you're going to be using it as follows. And this product, you're going to be using it as follows. So have a conversation like that, as opposed to now you, you, you don't have that connection with them in order for them to know that the product that you're getting them is going to be used how. So that's basically the generation types. You need to be effective in communicating that. And then quickly, consumers also have different market segments. And I'll put them all up here as we come to our close. But here's the thing, high income earners, as you're looking at your screen, the defining characteristics are personalization, convenience, and trust. The middle income earners, the defining characteristics are personalization and recognition. Whereas the low income earners, the defining characteristics will be value, convenience, and recognition. So this is just a, a breakdown of the different consumer market segments that may exist. And then also remember then, to come to a close here, consumer purchasing decisions, they can be divided into the following. Value, what value will they be gaining if they go with what you're recommending versus what will they be gaining if, or what will they be losing if they don't? So they have to choose between gaining and losing. That's all that they're deciding upon from a value point of view. Customization. How does the product, service, or solution that you are offering reflect who they are or think about themselves? Convenience is the third one. To what extent is the product, service, or solution being offered fit into their personal lifestyle, image, trends, and recognition? Will this enhance my personal brand, uh, how I'm perceived, and so forth? And so as a takeaway message to the practices, you need to have sales scripts and your entire practice needs to know how do we answer the following questions or concerns? Uh, what should our approach be? The first one, how much does it cost to get my eyes tested? Can I please get a quotation on the following? I sit in front of a computer the whole day and I think it has an impact on my eyes. Ever since I have been wearing spectacles, my vision is getting worse. How do you do with when that question pops up? My eyes are constantly red, itchy, watery, etc., and I can't stand it anymore. What do you do when a person presents with that scenario? I'm struggling to see clearly at night. Is there anything else that can be done about it? What do you do when a person presents with that? I get a headache after reading or concentrating for a certain period of time. What is the approach that every staff member should have when a person phones in and complains about the following. So you have to have a, a standardized sales scripts of three or four different examples of each one. And you have to take into consideration the generation types. If uh, Michelle Obama generation type 
is the one who's asking how much does it get to have my eyes tested go back to the examples i gave you in terms of how do you engage that group if uh, the rock generation type uh, is the one who's saying can i please get a quotation on the following you answer that question based on the generation type what is the best way to effectively engage that group or i sit in front of a computer the whole day and i think it has got an impact on my eyes if that is from a millennial who whereby we make the largest workforce a largest group in the workforce and i'm a high income earner versus a low income earner and i'm asking you that question or i'm making that uh, statement how do you approach me based on the fact that i'm a millennial versus if uh, a different generation type was the one that asked that uh, question so think of all these examples in terms of what will be the sales script for this generation who's a high income earner what will be the sales script for this generation type with who's a middle income earner and so forth and that's basically what you should be doing or focusing on as a team especially now uh, during the lockdown you should actually as an optometrist be discussing this on a day to day basis with your team you should be spending at least 30 minutes every 2 to 3 days uh, communicating have a, having a whatsapp group being in touch with your team discussing various uh, strategies that you guys will need to be employing post the lockdown if you need to be having a webinar with your staff members uh, on a, every second day with, during the lockdown do so you're going to be sitting there and thinking my staff don't have uh, access to the internet they've got cell phones correct you can buy them data uh, that can be enough for you to conduct business with them so that you are prepared post the lockdown that all your staff members are again even as a staff member who's listening in right now you need to be in a position to be ready to answer these things because i don't want to say this but i have to uh, a lot of practices are going to be challenged with not seeing the same amount of patients that they used to be some staff members are going to be challenged with work that might not be there post the lockdown so the one of the quickest things that you can do as a staff member is to ensure that you are competent you are excellent you producing work that is above the norm so that when the particular business owner is thinking where do i save money on my business and staff is an area that they start thinking about you don't even come close to their mind because of how excellent you are in that particular environment so guys thank you very much uh, this is all i believe was relevant that i could share with you today i'm looking forward to the next sessions online right now is where you can i mean on your screen right now is where you can find us online both on the vision straight account as well as my personal account we hope you enjoyed this presentation we look forward to the next one the presentations or the webinar sessions are going to be taking place every 2 to 3 weeks and so please join keep looking at our and joining our uh, bbgr facebook uh, group uh, we're sharing a lot of information on that group pertaining to information that is necessary for practices to know pertaining to uh, anything eyewear related anything eye health related anything eye care related and so any further questions please do get in touch with your bbgr consultants and uh, my details have already been shared with you on the chat group as well and so please do not hesitate to get in touch with us